Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're Team 12, and our project is on the desalination of seawater, and our faculty advisor is Dr. Andres Hermante. I'm Jesse Fontus. I'm Jonathan Perez. And my name is Kelvin Solano, and these are the division of the responsibilities. While these were the things that we were concerned with, we, of course, helped each other along the way of the design process. Before we discuss our design, we have to talk about the issues concerning the water supply. We know that roughly 70% of the Earth consists of water, but when we look at the, the figure here, we see that most of it is trapped in the oceans, and that only 2.5% is fresh water. When we further analyze that 2.5%, we see that most of it is trapped in glaciers and ice caps. That's a problem with Earth's rising temperatures. Uh, we have the melting of glaciers and ice caps, and that's just water that's being lost in the oceans. Groundwater. We live in the day of, of bottled water, and we have these companies just tapping into these underground aquifers and just running these, these underground aquifers dry. So that leaves us with 1.2% of fresh water on the surface. When we do the math, that's roughly 0.004% of all water on Earth that is available to us. This does not take into account water that's polluted, water that's found in the atmosphere, water that's found in living things, so on and so forth. The main problem that we have is that there is water depletion and it is a global concern that affects many countries, especially those that do not have the resources to tackle the problem. As I just mentioned, the water crisis is a global concern. As seen in the figure here in red, uh, it's something that's prevalent across the globe. The main example that we know here in the United States is the severe drought in California. But our neighbors to the south of Mexico are also suffering from a similar problem. As we go here to Africa, Morocco, they're suffering from severe water stress. Uh, same thing for Spain and in Asia, Iran, India, and China. Some of these countries are suffering from more severe and frequent uh, droughts, which leads to restrictions on water usage. Restrictions on water usage can lead to economic struggles, and they lead to uh, political tensions. Another problem that some of these countries face is that they do not have access to clean drinking water, which is caused by poor management and infrastructure. And there are some desalination plants found in these areas, but the means of which they use to desalinate water are rather expensive, and they have negative environmental impacts. For instance, the amount of brine that they produce, or the pumping, the straight pumping that they do from the ocean. So it is our job as engineers to tackle this problem, develop a system, or a desalination apparatus, that takes advantage of the climate found in these countries, and the amount of water that's surrounded by them. That's one of the things that baffled us going into this project. Can you go back? That's one of the things that baffled us going into this project. All these countries that are suffering from severe water stress are surrounded by large bodies of water. Global learning. We've, we've demonstrated that this is a global problem. We've raised global awareness. Global perspective. This is a problem that is not going to go away. It's going to worsen as the years come. There may be even political tension caused by this problem. It's an issue that needs to be resolved. Global engagement. We want to develop a multilingual manual on the assembly of our apparatus to further the, the use of our desalination unit. Now that we've defined our problem statement by solving the water crisis by desalinating seawater, we then looked at previous designs to get some insight and ideas. First being this, the desalinator. As you can see in figure one, it's a small scale system that's, that's able to be sustained by solar energy, which then powers the battery, which then uh, powers the purification process. It's able to convert up to 15 liters per day, which was very impressive, and it's something we wanted to implement in our system. Secondly, the pure output ink system, which is figure two, the bigger system on the bottom. This also uses solar energy to offset the energy cost. However, it's a larger system, so there's different components, such as the pumps and also membranes that need more electricity. So this is something we want to cut back on. And lastly, the rainmaker. This system right here, figure three, it's an enclosed system, which uses the, the shell and tube method. Uh, it's enclosed, so it's able to uh, make the heat cycle system more efficient. So we want to implement that into our system. Um, next thing we'll talk about is the objectives. Seeing the previous designs that we looked at in the last slide, we then wanted to make some goals for our senior design. First being we wanted to make a small scale desalinization unit. This will help with the energy cost uh, by decreasing it. Also we want to make it portable in household to make it available for lower income families. Um, Purify water, we want it to desalinate 70% of the input seawater and also produce 15 liters of water per day. This will make it uh, competitive in today's market. And lastly, we want to make the apparatus self-sustaining. Uh, as mentioned on the, the other side, the larger scale system had a, a lot of energy requirement needs. So making a, a system that will be able to use uh, the sun's energy in the form of conduction and convection radiation will uh, offset the cost and decrease 
the, uh, the, the input energy costs and also produce DC energy uh, using any excess steam and uh, excess heat. Uh, some technical laws we put into uh, our design is first the thermal properties of water. In our scenario, we'll be using seawater, which have, is water with uh, sea salt, so the boiling temperature will uh, be increased, so we want to take that into consideration. Secondly, the amount of energy required to produce steam. In this slide here, you see that at 100 degrees Celsius, water uh, is uh, changed from um, liquid to vapor. However, there is uh, more energy required uh, to, uh, to uh, sustain that process, so that must be taken into account in, uh, in regards to energy input. Secondly, the materials. Uh, we want uh, materials that are highly conductive uh, because we're dealing with heat transfer. Uh, so copper and aluminum were good options for this. Uh, thermal expansion was something we also looked into. Uh, due to the high temperatures we'll be uh, dealing with, uh, there's certain um, deformations that will happen and uh, this must be taken into consideration too due to uh, uh, dimensions and things of the system. And also the greenhouse effect. Uh, as you can see in this diagram here, the car, uh, the, the, the radiation from the sun enters the car and is trapped inside. So we wanted to use this concept with our design in order to uh, make the heat cycle more efficient. Uh, and lastly, we want to insulate our system to prevent any heat losses and any waste. All right, so this is the initial design flow of our desalination unit. The first component being the, the boiler. The boiler is going to contain the salt water and it's going to be circulating inside the solar collector so that the solar collector can input uh, thermal energy. And at the same time, we're also going to have an external heat source by the front, front out lens to provide more thermal energy so we can produce steam inside the boiler. And in the meantime, any steam that's, that's produced in the boiler, we're going to collect it in the heat exchanger process that's going to input salt water and that's also going to put output fresh water and brine. Brine being highly uh, salt concentrations of water. And with the, with, the, with the steam, we're going to use that to produce energy through means of a sturdy engine, because we're working with high temperature differences. So the four major components of our bullet type are the solar collector, heat exchanger pumps, and the sturdy engine. The solar collector and sturdy engines are ideas that have been previously worked on by previous CCC and design groups, but we're remodifying the design to fit our system. For instance, we, we kind of like the fact that the solar collector had a parabolic shape so it could collect more thermal energy and we also like the fact that we can input piping all around the, the, the solar collector so that we can pump water in and out of the solar collector. Here is an example of the heat exchanger that we modeled in SolarWorks that is composed of two chambers the, the, where the heat exchanger process is going to occur and a condensing chamber. Basically, we're going to have steam filled up in, the, in this chamber and we're going to have seawater flowing in. They both don't come in contact, but the seawater is going to get the the thermal energy from, from the steam, also condensing the steam so we can get it as fresh water. And in the meantime, any, any salt water, I mean any salt water that evaporates is going to be collected in the condensing chamber. It's going to rise up, it's going to be back to the preheater, and in the meantime it's going to condense there and we're going to have it flowing down into its own fresh water reservoir so we can have fresh water and brine separate. Uh, here are some engineering standards. We decided to go with ASME because ASME has many standards for working with uh, closed volumes for the heat exchanger. And since we're working with steam, they have many standards for temperature limits, pressure limits, and safety standards that we can take into consideration. And since we're working with a solar collector and a water heating process, we decided to take into consideration solar radius and certification corporation because they provide many uh, standards for waterproofing to prevent leaking and solar degradation because our system is going to be exposed to uh, the sun for a long period of time. So a basic design story that we want to do is that we're using SOLIDWORKS because we can model our entire system into SOLIDWORKS and with that we can also run simulations so that we can determine optical path diameters and flow rate for our entire system. We can also perform many iterations to determine which will work best. And all that for, and all that we can also redesign our, the solar collector to be able to retain more heat and all that provides easy, make, makes it easier for, for us to decide material, cost analysis, and semi and testing of our entire system. Some obstacles that we have to overcome, that we know we are going to have to overcome, is the fact that, it's going to, is that there's going to be a high cost, but we want to reduce that as much, as much as possible, and that we have to, it has to be easily maintainable. And also the fact that when we're going to conduct testing, it's going to be, it's going to be done during the winter. And since our system relies on the sun, that's going to impact our, our testing. And some concerns we have to take in consideration is the brine disposal, because uh, if you dispose of brine inappropriately, you're going to have, it's going to have an environmental impact. And also the fact that since we're taking consideration, we're working with high temperatures, that, that's a health concern because something could get injured if it's inappropriately assembled. And since we're going to be working with moisture and lack of minerals and purified water as well. 
this is our projected timeline. Right now we're a little behind simulation analysis and construction because we're busy finishing up a research initial design flow, but we should be able to catch up on the Christmas break and hopefully we conduct testing during January. That concludes our presentation. Thank you for your time. going to manage the filtration of the water coming in, making sure there's no deposits or anything contaminating the water. We were thinking about probably doing like an initial filter, nothing like the previous group. We were probably making like a homemade filter of some sort, like with pebbles and stuff to, to filter seaweed and, and larger, larger particles. Yeah, and any contaminants in the brine itself, so we're going to be disposing of the brine right now, evaporating all the water, so most of the contaminants is going to remain there because it's going to be evaporated, so distilled water. We're going to be collecting also brine. So brine is going to be uh, environmentally exposed though. So we've got to handle most of the contaminants inside. So in your system there, the, the, the salt, once the, the water evaporates, how are you going to collect that salt? Uh, yeah, so we don't have it on the, on the proposed design, but we're going to have basins on which the water, the purified water and the brine water is going to be collected. Have you accounted for corrosion? Yeah, that's kind of why we were looking into copper and aluminum, because those are like not completely corrosive, but those fight corrosion very well. Is there a reason why you decided to have the byproduct be brine versus salt? Well, that's one of the other reasons why we don't want to have 100% efficiency. Because if we do, if we were to have 100% efficiency, we'd have salt accumulating in the pipes, and we, we don't want that because that would affect the the corrosion. That would give um, give into the corrosion factor. But I would think that the brine has got to. You have to have a waste stream for brine. Salt would be an easier waste stream than brine. Yeah, but the thing is, we don't want to take fish that we've developed salt concentrations into like salt crystals inside. So to prevent it, you can keep it in its water form because that's easier to flow out instead of having a solid. Because okay. the water is going to be circular. And are you planning to demineralize or remineralize your water source? Uh, we haven't taken that completely into consideration because most of these countries are, are like suffering from severe droughts. So we're trying to tackle that problem of providing water, distilled water first. And also, the water is going to be used not only for drinking, but also for other purposes, such as cleaning and things like that, too. So. But also, yeah, the demineralizing is uh, something we also have to take. They can still get pleurisy if you don't get the minerals back. Yeah. They drink it. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you very much.